Good evening. Has it hit you yet that we are living through a pandemic? Has it really sunk in? In 10 years from now, we look back at this time and history will call it the pandemic of 2020. This is a difficult time for everyone. Some are especially hit hard, like the poor, the migrants, the laborers whose worlds have been completely disrupted. Some are not as bad off, but nobody is unaffected. Whether it's a five-year-old who can't understand why he's not having a birthday party this year or a class 12 student who's worked hard all year to get into the college of his or her dreams but may not get to go there after all. Whether it's parents and professionals worried about their finances or job security or just people worried about whether any one of their loved ones will fall sick. As We The People does its bit to fight the spread of the coronavirus, we're asking tonight, how do we flatten the anxiety curve? Before COVID-19, India was already considered the suicide capital of the world, accounting for 30% of the world's depression, addiction and suicides. Every 17 seconds, someone takes their own life in India. And adding to this tinderbox now is this pandemic, which has changed life as we know it so much and so fast that we're all grappling emotionally with social and economic uncertainty. And so today on We The People, we want to touch upon a crucial issue that may get swept under the carpet, the impact of COVID-19 on the mental health of Indians and the measures that we can take to enhance our mental health wellness and for that today we have on the show co-founder of uh, inner hour it's a digital mental health platform with about half a million users from over 100 cities globally and it's a platform that's addressing mental health during the coronavirus we have dr shekhar saxena he is the professor of the practice of global mental health at the th chan school of public health at harvard he's also a former director of the department of mental health and substance abuse at the who and we have aditya ghosh former indigo president member of the board of directors of uh, Oyo uh, Hotel. Dr. Neha Kirpal, co-founder of uh, Inarar, that uh, mental health platform. Uh, Neha, we heard Shaheen saying that everyone is struggling uh, with some sort of stress, some sort of anxiety, uh, mental health issues right now. You don't have to have a precondition when it comes to mental health to be affected right now under this lockdown. Remember, it's, it's day 26. Uh, and you've seen that because you, you've seen a 45% spike in the downloads of your, your app, Inarar, since COVID started. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, Inarar was started uh, three years ago. And over the last three years, we've seen over 600,000 uh, lives being touched uh, across 100 cities. Uh, it was founded uh, by my co-founder, psychiatrist, Dr. Amit Malik. Uh, who had been on the board of the Royal College of Psychiatry and had a, a big clinical practice in the NHS um, and then moved back to India to set this up. Now, what we are seeing over the last uh, few years is that the entire series of uh, psychological self-help platforms that we have available, uh, the support that is available to people uh, anonymously, easy access 24-7, uh, is something that is coming very much in, in handy today. Uh, and we're seeing a big spike uh, both on the therapy sessions as well as the um, uh, as well as the the app engagement itself. All right. So um, you've also made NRR pro bono for this entire lockdown period. That's right. I mean, looking at the sort of psychological impact of this crisis that we're dealing with, uh, we've really felt that it's important to support healthcare organizations, frontline workers, NGOs, university students, and employees working from home. So a lot of our effort has gone in actually revamping parts of the app, creating COVID-specific uh, stress management programs uh, that we want to make available widely, and uh, opened all of that up pro bono for all of those organizations uh, in this period of time. At least it gives you that initial level of early intervention, easy access uh, to some support uh, digitally while we're all in lockdown. All right, and, and a lot of this comes, stems from the fact that you have a lived-in experience. You've actually personally dealt with being a caregiver and living with uh, someone in the family who's had a, a, mental health, uh, a mental health issue. Could you share your story with us? So the reason I'm working in mental health and, and why I joined Dr. Amit Malik last year uh, was really to try and uh, bring my life's purpose to some level of, uh, of fruition. 
and uh, my journey with mental health started when i was uh, five years old uh, when my mother had started uh, showing symptoms of uh, schizophrenia and it was very difficult for us because it was a time when people didn't even know uh, what the illness was and we're an urban educated family in south delhi but without any support and understanding uh, it was a t difficult thing to grapple with uh, a condition like psychosis we spent over two decades our whole family struggled through that uh, both clinically and in society to tr try and find a way uh, to deal with the illness and also her. find our place in the world so as a young girl for me i you know i coped through it through school and college and um, i did have to deal with a lot more than what i was prepared for uh, but really uh, for me it was a question of focusing uh, what i've learned in the course of my life uh, to try and to try and build some mental health services to solve for awareness building early access and intervention to people because we spent 20 years trying to find that rehabilitation in our family and today my mother's been through treatment for 20 years and is fully rehabilitated in our family we she's a wonderful grandparent in my daughter's life uh, and all of this uh, needn't have cost us 20 years of our life uh, so i think today times have changed you know there are help helplines available there are platforms available where people can go and reach out, reach out for support within the community. Uh, and that's what Amit and I have sort of set out to build. Thank you so much. And, you know, thank you for sharing, uh, sharing that story. Extremely uh, personal. Uh, you've shared that with us. Neha, let me ask you that question. Do you think someone today is more equipped? How do you think the Mental Health Care Act helps uh, anyone who may be uh, at home right now, stressed, uh, full of anxiety, we're worried about our jobs or whether we lose our jobs going forward. Can we be legally more empowered uh, to, to protect ourselves given this uh, historic Mental Health Care Act of 2017? Neha? Neha, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. Uh, I was just quickly asking you whether you think the Mental Health Care Act has changed anything. From, from the times when you were a young teenager trying to grapple with, you know, your mom going missing and uh, the issues Absolutely. that she had of schizophrenia. Yeah, for the longest time, uh, people have grappled and struggled with mental health difficulties in India and not really had the support of legislation or civic understanding. But over the last few years, we've seen a Mental okay. Health Care Act uh, being passed in India in 2017 and it's actually a judiciable right for every Indian to go out and get help. So today mental health has to be treated at par with physical health and you know we must remember mental health belongs to everybody. Mental illness is a one in four problem and therefore we are all somewhere on that spectrum particularly now in these troubled COVID times with increased anxieties around health, around stress, uh, financial anxieties, uh, different people are struggling in, in work from home, employees are struggling, parents raising children at home are struggling. So it's really a time for us to be able to seek the support. There are lots of self-help platforms and, and like ours, but also other helplines that people can call. But I would really encourage the early intervention saves lives and saves many years of happy, productive life after. These conditions are 100% treatable. Many are very curable and therefore you must try and get help. Okay, uh, let's try Dr. Shekhar again. You know, Dr. Shekhar, collective stress, we've touched upon this in Neha Sori and in Shaheen. Collective stress uh, has the potential of becoming a long term sustained strain on the economy. And in a sense, you know, the mental, emotional toll of COVID 19 is as much a threat to public health as the virus itself. Why is it, do you think? We know the government has a lot on its plate. They have to deal with many issues, economic and social, otherwise. But why is it that this is, why do you say, or is this equally important? Oh, yes, very much, Sitara. Uh, we do know from earlier disasters and pandemics that the uh, prevalence of mental disorders increases by almost five times after these disasters. And almost, as you said earlier, almost everybody will be affected. So this uh, mental health issue will not go away. India is not going to be an exception. India is going to be hurt very badly because of that. And many of these problems are going to last a long time. What we need, based on my experience of working with WHO and also in India, is people to work together. The government has to improve its services for mental health, which are at this point of time 
very scanty, very, very weak. Correct. The employers have to really support their employees in a very constructive way for their mental health and well-being hmm. and also for social issues. And civil society has to step up to provide social and psychological support whenever it is possible. And during this time, it can be very much a remote support. And we, the people, have to recognize that we are not invincible. We may need help, we may want help, we should seek help and we should get help. Mm -hmm. The kind of work that is being done on digital delivery of mental health is not going to be useful only during the pandemic. It's going to last us a long time because that will increase the access to mental health services, mm -hmm. which is very much needed in a country like India. All right, uh, you know, Doctor, you've touched upon a very important aspect. Uh, financial stress and financial anxi anxiety right now is playing on everybody's, uh, everybody's mind. But Dr. Shekhar, that, you know, the other irony, just uh, last word to you, the other irony, something that we all need to watch out for, is that chronic mental stress, anxiety, it can lead to uh, heart disease, obesity, to strokes, and also can induce people to just consume more alcohol and drugs. All of this reduces immunity, right, and the ability to fend off uh, COVID-19. Uh, COVID and what all experts are telling us right now, since we don't have a vaccine, the only thing we should focus on is to build immunity. Uh, that's right. Our uh, mental and physical uh, beings are very much joined. We don't live in two different worlds of mental and physical health. So our anxiety and stress have a direct relationship to how our body functions. And in many cases, it does increase the chances of us having uh, physical issues in short term as well as in long term. And how we lead our life, including physical exercise, diet, and other things, improves our mental well-being, but also our physical well-being and makes our body fight the stress as well as the virus in a better way. So I think, the, uh, as somebody was saying, we live through very unusual times, but we need to protect our health, physical as well as mental health, as best as possible during right. these times. Well, thank you all for joining us. I hope we've been able to raise uh, some of the issues. I know that we haven't touched upon a lot. There's a, a reports of increase of domestic violence. There's the stress and anxiety that our uh, healthcare workers are experiencing, our doctors are experiencing because they're worried about infecting their own family members. So we haven't touched upon this in depth. In depth. We'll try and do so on this show and on NDTV. But uh, for now, uh, goodbye. And let's take care of ourselves and let's take care of others.